What's going on? It's Dave here from Profitable.Tools, and this is my follow-up video to my initial Fluent Support review. Now, I posted this just a few days ago to coincide with the release of Fluent Support. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out that video first. It's gonna be a lot more informative than this one. So what's the point of making a follow-up video so soon after launch? Well, I wanted to do a few things that you guys have asked for. First of all, I'm gonna go through the setup process because that wasn't included in my initial review. I kind of skipped to already having it configured. So we'll do that right away as soon as I get done with this introduction. The next thing I wanted to cover was some of the third-party integrations, things like WooCommerce, LearnDash, so on and so forth. And the last thing I wanted to address was the bugs that I found in my initial review. I found quite a few pretty big bugs, uh, things that were really bothering me. And literally by the time I had posted the video live to YouTube, the founder had commented on the YouTube video saying, hey, we patched all of those, uh, you know, like as you're uploading. So uh, really great to see that. I wanna check it out for myself, make sure that they're all actually fixed. Uh, he said they fixed most of them. So we'll see which ones they didn't grab. All right, without further ado, let's just jump into this. I've got Fluent Support already installed on this website right here, but I have not activated it yet. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here is my plugins page. You can see that Fluent Support is nestled amongst all of the other Fluent plugins. Let's go ahead and activate this. All right, so the plugin is activated and I get this notice here that I need to install another plugin, the base plugin, in order to use the pro version. So I'm just gonna click here and it's gonna go ahead and install in the background. All right, the base plugin is installed. Let's go ahead and activate it. All right, now that I've got both plugins activated, I am ready to go through the setup process. So the first time you click on Fluent Support, it's gonna ask you to set up your business details. So go ahead and enter your business name, your business email address, and then the support portal page you want to use. Now, if you don't already have a page on your website that you want to use for the support portal, you can go ahead and check this box right here, and then Fluent Support will create a page for you and automatically insert this fluent underscore support underscore portal shortcode on that page, which will make the support portal appear on the page. That is what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna make sure this is checked and hit complete setup. All right, so it says awesome. Your support portal is ready to go. To go ahead and check out that page, just head over to pages, then scroll all the way down to the bottom probably, and you're gonna see the support portal page. Let's go ahead and view that. Now it's gonna tell you that you can't see this page because you're logged in as an administrator. So what I'm gonna do here is just copy this URL and then open it up in an incognito window. Paste in the URL. Now this does confirm that the first bug that I found has been fixed because if you remember early on in my video, I mentioned that they had an actual typo in their short code for embedding the login form on the page. So the way you found that was to go to Fluent Support and then go to Settings. And under the general settings, there is a short code that shows up on the support portal page. So it's a short code inside of another short code. And it was missing a T before. That has obviously been corrected here and everything is working great. Another error that I saw before was that the notifications were taking up the entire side of the screen. As I hit save here, you can see that it's clearly working a lot better. The notifications are showing up correctly. I might personally prefer them in the upper right-hand corner as opposed to the lower right-hand corner, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and make an account here as a user so I can submit a support ticket to see if they fix that issue with uploading images. So here is the back end of the support portal. Now I'm not styled it at all right now and I'm using the hello theme from Elementor. So I don't even have any spacing at the bottom. So everything's kind of butted up next to the footer. It doesn't look great, but that's something that I can easily tweak on the back end later on. For now, I want to try creating that new ticket because if you saw my first video, you'll know that creating the ticket worked just great until you tried to upload an image, in which case the redirect didn't work. So let's go ahead and see if that's fixed. So here is my ticket and I do have that image uploaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this ticket in. And now it is properly redirecting. So that is really good to see. Color me impressed because WP Manage Ninja has already fixed the major bugs that I found while initially testing this plugin. And they did it all you know, within a few hours of me posting my video on YouTube. So kudos to them. So next up, I wanna test out that WooCommerce integration. I've got a product in my cart right now. I'm gonna go ahead and make a purchase. And now my purchase is complete. It's important to note that I use the same account that I sent the initial upload, the, you know, the support ticket that I did just a moment ago to actually make this purchase. So let's go ahead and check out the back end and we can see that WooCommerce integration. 
All right, through the magic of editing, I've also went ahead and added this same user to a LearnDash course. So now let's head back to Fluent Support and let's see their ticket that they've opened. In fact, I actually opened up a couple tickets here just to demonstrate some more of the interface. So here I've got my first initial ticket. I open this up and I can see over in the right hand sidebar here, I've got my user and I can see uh, what purchases they have on WooCommerce. There's a little eyeball right here and I can click that and it will actually take me off to the WooCommerce purchase. So if I needed to issue a refund, I could do it from this screen. Now I also can see what LearnDash courses they're enrolled in and I can also see any previous interactions or other interactions this customer has had. So this right hand sidebar starts to get a lot more useful. You can see a lot more about the customer at a glance. Now, because I'm also using Fluent CRM, I could also tag them so that they're added to some marketing automations, maybe based on our interactions here. So all of the integrations with Fluent support from third-party plugins are generally gonna work in the exact same fashion that WooCommerce and LearnDash did. Let's say you're using Restrict Content Pro or Buddy Boss. In the right-hand corner, it's gonna show you their status so you can see where they're at or what they've subscribed to with your business. Now, I will say that I think we're missing out on a real opportunity to provide a better experience for our customers here if the Fluent Support folks would maybe just add in a little bit more customization. So what I'm talking about here is when you submit a support ticket, it sure would be great if a list of your transactions showed up as an end user. I can say, hey, I have a question about this order specifically. You get a little drop down menu and you can choose the one or maybe it just lists it, displays them kind of like Amazon does when you go check your past orders. You can say, hey, I have a question about this order. And then you could start a ticket related to that specific order. Makes it very clear to the support person as well as the person submitting the ticket that they're gonna be understood. The other little things that I think are missing having used other software in this world is keyboard shortcuts, right? So if I wanted to reply to this person, rather than having to click on everything, I'd love to be able to just press one key to get the reply up. Uh, same thing with things like the returns here. It'd be really nice to be able to process a return uh, right from this window rather than having to go all the way back to WooCommerce, find the right screen. Now it is nice that all of the data is right here, but it would be a lot faster if you were processing this stuff on volume to not have to actually go into WooCommerce. Just one other thing I'd love to see, and that is some styling options. So you can see right here, this is the portal page and mostly it's doing a good job of picking up on the style that my theme has set but it's not doing that all the time. For example, this active button right here is blue, but I don't think that is a setting that I have on my theme. All the other colors seem accurate, so I'm not really sure it could be somewhere deep buried within the theme, but it would be nice to just have maybe the options to configure these buttons standalone in case you didn't wanna rely on your theme's colors. So that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you found it helpful to see how they're patching the bugs and how the third-party integrations work. If you want to know more about applications such as this, it is Black Friday month. We're going to be starting our Black Friday coverage here very, very shortly. You definitely want to make sure to get subscribed to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'll have all my links down in the description, including a link to grab fluent support, as well as to find me on social media, join my newsletter, so on and so forth. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. I try to get back to absolutely everybody, and I'll see you in the next review.